Now for the fun part with the gaming engine stuff. Back to my plugins folder. You'll see a crap ton of stuff here in my Unity folders. If you're gonna wanna work with your VRM and FBX files inside of Unity, you're gonna need to download a couple of things. And BC Face is actually made with Unity. A couple of these other apps that I use are also made with Unity. So this is probably a good one to start out with. And as far as the plugins that you're gonna need, I would say make sure you get the VSF SDK. If you want to do stuff in VR chat, you're going to want the VRC SDK 3 or Avatar if you want to just build avatars and world if you want to build world. Um, you window capture, you'll probably find some tutorials online for that. It works, but the VC developers told me that it's actually better to use Spout for Unity. That's another plugin you're going to want to get. This is going to allow you to take in a source from your computer and send it to your avatar VRM, basically. So, like I've got this computer screen here and this monitor here. When I hit play, okay, so I've got some audio problems. Ignore that. It's let me stop this. So basically what that's doing is it's actually pulling a feed from one of my surveillance cameras that are actually here connected to my house and you can see it on the monitor in game. How cool is that? So that's using Spout. Look into that if you're interested in getting your computer monitors into your world that you build. But yeah, basically you can go online, find some assets for things that you want to build. There's a lot of free ones out there for Unity in their asset store. You can get started pretty easily with just drag and drop. If you have a little bit more experience experience obviously you'll get some more detailed stuff uh there's really cool things you can do with materials like i showed you in that example that i found on their discord so you can basically set up things to change colors or bring in lights or animations there's so many cool things you can do with it and also on my discord i have this new section i set up called files and apps i put a lot of the information in there too and a lot of the links this tracking.unity package this is a plugin for the leap so that you can get hand motions working inside of unity uni vrm is the important one though this is the one that when you go ahead and just click on it it's gonna load it into your unity project you'll get a little window like like this that pops up except it's gonna have a whole list of files you'll go ahead and just hit okay to import it it'll create these vrm folders inside your unity project and these are gonna have the components that you need to drop in to make this stuff work for example this quad here that i put down in the scene and i go to add component spout and then you'll see there's a spout receiver and sender and all that there that's basically how i'm getting my feed from my camera into unity so if you want to look into that plugin there's a lot of information about how that works once you add these components into your scene it'll start doing the things that you need so here's how to set up unity to work with your avatar i'm gonna open up that folder with all those plugins i was telling you about go ahead and click on this uni vrm package there we go there's all the files we're going to import once i have that loaded in the first thing i want to do is go ahead into my assets folder and just create a new folder for my avatar here into the import vrm just drag it right here and it'll put it in the center of your scene and as you can see here we have the avatar in unity you have some of the same things that you can do in blender this area is the same thing in unity here when you click on top of the hierarchy of it here and when we scroll down on the inspector you should see that there's one for blend shapes and when you load your avatar into unity with this vrm plugin you'll see that there's blend shape groups that are added here these blend shape groups are basically these in blender here this blend shape proxy section if i went to add a here for example and we click here for a and then i go in here and we select uh, i think the head on this one is the one that has everything so so there we go a we select it we choose one now if i go ahead and save out this avatar as a VRM and I load it into Unity, this A would pretty much be set up. If you want to skip that and just set these basic ones up here in Unity, select A. You would go here to the area that has your blend shapes. 
But if you have everything grouped, you should only see one. So like yours would say the name of your avatar body or something. It's, you're going to see all the shape keys here. So you would go down to A, drag this all the way to one. And when you click here, export your VRM. If you were to import it back into Blender, you're gonna see that this A would be set up. Basically, these two sections here will coincide together when you're setting up your VRM. If you set up the basic ones, then that'll work for like if you have a webcam that you're using for your facial motion tracking. But if you have the AR kit, the iPhone with the special camera, then you want to set up all your blend shapes here as well. And if you have your audio turned off, it'll not use those vSMEs, it'll use the blend shape groups that you've added from your shape keys. So all of the extra movements so you can be a little more animated like instead of it just following the motions of your voice or a little bit with your lips. It's definitely more accurate with that camera. Another thing that you can set up here in Unity is look at head scripts. You're gonna wanna choose your camera, which object is your head. So for example, we'll go here and select that little circle on the side, select the camera, and then here you can select the head. When you have it loaded in BC, there's things you can do where you can have a fake gaze that like constantly looks at the camera. But if you wanna set that up, there's other tutorials that'll show you how. So if you add in a custom blend shape and you click that one, for example, you can go in here and then you made a bunch of changes here where you move stuff around it would save to that one. So you could actually do multiple uh, different movements at once. And you can set up different expressions like fun, angry, joy, and all that by mixing them. You could do the same thing inside Blender, but you won't see the movements and positions as well. So like if here I wanted to mix two different ones, I would add another bind. And then let's say I also wanted the mouth to open with that all the way, you would add that like that. So then anytime the A is activated, your mouth would be open with it. Now you don't want to do that, but I'm just saying that's how you would add multiple things here. And you don't really get to see her making that base motion immediately. So this is why you can go back here to unity if you need to see what it's actually doing you can create all of the blend shape names here by just creating a new blend shape group going in here and giving it a name and once you have them all set up preferably named the same as all of your shape keys these and then you open up that vrm file back in unity you'll see that whole list here. So now let me bring in my avatar and show you what that looks like. All right, so as you can see here, I've got all of those blend shape group created and they're named like the AR kit names. Click on each one of these. You'll see here that they make all of those different AR kit motions. If these aren't here, then you're only using these, the basic ones, the A, E, I, O, U, blink L, blink right, full blink. When you first loaded that other avatar in, those are the only ones you'll be using. Even if you're using the iPhone app connected to VC face, when you're talking, you're going to think that your mouth is moving correctly, but it's actually not fully moving. It's moving only based on these. So you'll see here, all of them were created as separate files, but they all link up to these shape keys here. If we go to something like angry, you'll see that there are multiples here that are affected at one time. So now maybe you're wondering, what about all the bone linking and armature stuff? Well, I didn't really have to do that stuff with the avatar coming directly from Ready Player Me because most of that stuff's already named properly. As soon as you bring it into VC face and you have it connected to like a leap, you're gonna get those motions pretty correct. As soon as you start moving your hands, it'll start moving. You don't have to worry about linking all that stuff up correctly. Then you just got to get used to talking without putting your hands in front of your face because then that messes up all of the animations. And to close this out, once you're done, export this whole thing out as a avatar bundle using that BSF SDK I said to import. That means you can get this whole world with your lighting and your animations and any spout things that you bring in from your OBS, like other cameras, or if you want to just share your desktop in the scene, all that kind of stuff gets saved out into to the avatar bundle file. If you have errors, it'll let you know. But if you just want to mess with the VRM file to begin with,
it, you can just click on your avatar, make sure you have the uh, name in the hierarchy selected. I'm kind of blocking it at the moment, but if you don't have the top most avatar name in the hierarchy selected, you might have a problem exporting. So just go ahead and do that. Go here to export, save it out, and you can open it right up in VC Face. If you want to save out the whole scene, you would use Avatar Bundle, which there are some instructions on their website on some of the things that you can and can't use when it comes to uh, materials and particles, textures, all of that. But yeah, that's pretty much it for setting things up in on the Unity side. I mean, you can get really advanced with it, but that's the basics. And then lastly, there are a couple things that I wanted to mention about some of these other apps that I pointed out in the beginning. This Nyart tracker app, you pick your port number. Let's say this one here is 3333. And if I bring in VC face, check this out. Now, if we remove the tracking of the hands and you see here, this is the port number that we chose, but it's receiving from this app that's sending out. This is just like a local host port. That's why I was saying, if you understand how to route stuff, this will be awesome for you. If you want to have like a screen, watch this. I'm going to bring in like a PNG file of a screen for example and I'll use my mouse scroller here to uh, make it larger and now I have a screen that's dropped on and when I move my mouse around it's actually gonna follow my hand turn on the settings so that it's always on top now it's blocking my hand so it's not going through the screen but you can also move it further away from the avatar or closer if you need to so now if i'm using a pen if i'm doing like a live stream where i'm actually drawing on my pen tablet my hand's going to be moving around based on where my mouse cursor is on my window that's what this nyan art tracker app does and you can mess around with like the canvas size and all that that'll basically change how far up your hand goes so it's kind of cool if you want to do art streams or something where you just have uh, your desktop in the background like this or whatever app you're drawing on um, and you can have some pretty realistic motions without actually having to be on stream another cool thing is if you turn your avatar check this out the screen kind of even changes with it so like the perspective is going to change automatically for a little bit i mean you can get away with doing it so far before it starts looking kind of bad if you just need to rotate a little bit it's kind of cool because it's rotating with you another thing i noticed is if you have it on to where you put this in a certain spot like now it's connected to my hand so anywhere i move my hand this actually moves so you could use that for a prop like if you had a shield or a sword or something that you brought in it would be attached to your hand when you're moving it around maybe even a dildo or okay never mind so to get my hand movements back, I can just go back in here and track my hands again. And then my hands start to move for real, just like we originally had. I don't even have all the stuff set up that I want to set up on this thing yet, but there's so much that you can do. So that's why I wanted to show these apps and how they work for anybody who might be interested in learning this. Oh, I also mentioned Tracking World. I know it looks kind of funny when you first open up your avatar in it, but there's a bunch of stuff that you can do in here as well. So you might want to play around with this one too, but you don't really need it if you're using VC Face BMC Protocol Monitor. This is kind of like the OSC thing I was showing you inside terminal where it'll show you the BMC coming in through the port. If I turn this on to send through there, you should see here that you're getting all of these BMC data points being sent through. These names are going to be different than like what comes in through the face cap app OSC protocol. So that's how I kind of started debugging the issues I was having with my movements. If I saw that maybe in my BRM there was a name that was different than something on here. So make sure you check your spellings and all that kind of stuff. Between the OSC protocol one and the VMC debugger, you can at least see the data that's coming in and out. If you're not receiving anything, you know something's wrong. Or if something's coming in with a different name, you'll know what to change. Here's another thing I wanted to show you of how VC Face actually works with the mouth movement. So this is with AR Kit working right now. I can go ahead and actually just turn it on so the audio lip sync is on and that actually changes how my mouth is going to move. So watch this. Now that I have it turned on, it looks like my mouth is moving correctly, but it's actually syncing up to the audio of my microphone instead of actually using the blend shapes set up for AR kit. So watch how much better the tracking becomes on your lips. So now that I have it turned off, it 
moves better with the movement of my mouth. So if I say like, oh, and other stuff like that. Also being able to puff up my cheeks this way. That's all based on those blend shapes with AR kit. I just wanted to show that this was another thing to look out for. If you're trying to get the movements correct on your mouth and things are acting kind of weird, one of the places that you need to go is to make sure whether or not you're using this audio lip sync thing. Because if you are, then those VCMEs, the AEIOUs that you set up instead of actually using those shape keys and the blend shapes that you set up. So this is like from my previous video where I synced it up with the audio of my voice moving. And also if your mouth isn't opening all the way whenever you're talking, check if the blend shape smoothing's on because look, as I turn this all the way up, you see how my lips barely moving. So as I turn this down, you'll see that my lips move a lot more. If you guys have any questions or anything, just leave them in the comments below. I can dive deeper. We'll leave it there. See you guys.